be talking about benchmarking for success for the beef herd. Um, and mostly this is going to be focused on cow-calf operations. Um, but when we talk about benchmarking, I really um, want you to get, if you're not using benchmarks at all, um, the purpose of this is just to kind of introduce you to some of uh, the benchmarks that we can use uh, to identify how we can improve um, our, our production systems. Um, and our beef production. Um, so with that, I can advance, there we go. Um, so what is a benchmark? Um, so I looked up just because I was kind of curious what, what the formal definition of a benchmark was. Um, Mary Webster says that a benchmark is something that serves as a standard by which others can measure, uh, others may be measured or judged. The Cambridge Dictionary says that it's a standard for measuring or judging other things of the same type. Um, and the Oxford Dictionary is a standard or point of reference against which things may be compared or assessed. So basically a benchmark is a tool for comparing um, different things. So in the beef world or the animal world, um, I've kind of made this into our own definition as an objective unbiased value that can be used to evaluate performance of the animal, herd, or um, the farm. Okay, so that's what the purpose of a benchmark is in animal production. So how can we use benchmarks in our uh, in our beef herd? So we can use them to evaluate herd performance. So that can help us answer things like what's the current st uh, status of our herd performance, uh, which is very important to know. How does our performance compare to last year, for example? How does it compare to the last five years that we've been doing this? Um, what areas could be improved? And how does herd performance compare with other herds? And I have an asterisk here because um, it's important not to get too carried away when you're comparing uh, the performance of your herd to other herds because everybody has their own set of circumstances and their own set of goals. Um, but it is, um, is it is a use for, for benchmarks nonetheless. Um, it's also useful um, to some extent to evaluate individual animal, animal performance depending on the uh, benchmarks that we are using. So things, for example, like average daily gain. Um, you can use those to um, you know, look at animals, how do they compare with their cohorts or their herd mates? Um, how can you use these, you can use this information to identify the, the poor doers who might be potential candidates for culling. Uh, and also they can inform your decision, your future breeding decisions as well. Um, so benchmarks can be really useful uh, at the herd level, but also at the animal level as well. Um, but in order to get started with benchmarks, um, it's important to realize that data collection is extremely important. Um, and you've heard it before, and I know that we've talked about it several times throughout our webinar series, is that you can't manage what you don't measure. So good, reliable um, inf data is important to collecting um, reliable, objective benchmarks. Um, and they can only be calculated from good data. So what is good data? Um, it's data that's accurate. It's legible, so if you're handwriting things, it needs to be, you need to be able to read it. Other people need to be able to read it as well. Um, it needs to contain all the important or necessary information, and it needs to be accessible. Um, so when I say accessible, I mean that you need to be able to find it when you need it. Um, it shouldn't just be on, you know, the back of a napkin somewhere, and then maybe it gets thrown away or something like that. So it needs, you need to have some sort of um, consistent, organized system in place. It could just be a notebook. It doesn't have to be super complex. Um, but it is important to have that data. Um, I always go back to the old adage of garbage in, garbage out. So if you have really awful data that's disorganized or it's not collected accurately or, um, you know, there's a lot of errors in it, um, it's not really going to give you um, a good, accurate picture of your herd. You're not going to be able to uh, calculate, you know, good, um, solid benchmarks from that. Um, so that can really befuddle your your um, decisions that you want to make from, from those bench benchmarks. So there's a couple of common benchmarks that we'll use in beef production that can reflect um, reproduction, it can reflect health, and it can also reflect the performance of our animals. So there, we're going to kind of go through each of these um, different categories and list a few of the benchmarks that you can use um, to assess these different areas. And we'll end up at the very end, we'll go over a couple of benchmarks that can give you kind of an overall snapshot of how your herd is doing. So in terms of reproduction, um, the length of the calving season is the first benchmark that we like to look at. 
It's a pretty simple one to calculate. Basically, it's the number of days between your first calving and your last calving, right? Um, there's no magic number for this, but just note that when you have calves um, born closer together, they're going to be more uniform when you go to sell them. They're going to be more, uh, more similar in size. They're going to have similar uh, management needs. Their, their health care um, management and things like that are going to be on a similar timeline, so it makes it easier to manage. And it can also help with your personal time management. So if you're calving, you know, to you know, in a 60 day window, there's, you know, there's two months of the year where you know you're gonna be really busy, that can help you budget your time. Versus if you have a four month calving window, you know that there's four months where you could be kind of busy, but you're not, you know, you're not super busy during that two months, but um, you're kind of busy during that time. So if that matters to you, shortening up that calving season can help um, in that regard as well. Pregnancy rate is another big one in terms of reproduction. Uh, it re reflects the reproductive efficiency for your females as well as your males. Um, so in order to calculate pregnancy rates, you basically will divide the number of females that you confirm pregnant by the number of females that are exposed for breeding. So that includes, you know, all females that are bred, uh, whether or not they get pregnant, obviously, um, and multiply that by 100%. Now you can do this separately for cows and heifers if you want to get an idea of how each of those two groups are performing. Um, but nonetheless, you do have to include all of the females exposed for breeding in that denominator in order to get a good um, uh, estimate of pregnancy rate. So poor pregnancy rate can be related to many different factors. Um, you know, the first things that come to mind are poor nutrition, um, health, or poor body condition. So we've talked about in our previous sessions, we've talked about how important body condition is for our females in terms of reproductive efficiency if they're too thin. Um, they are not going to be as fertile. They might not cycle as regularly as they would otherwise. Um, and also, it could also reflect issues on the bull side, right? It could affect, it could, you know, indicate that the bull is having problems uh, with fertility. Maybe it was really hot, um, you know, a month or two ago, and he now, you're now experiencing, um, you know, poor fertility in that bull. Maybe he has poor libido, or maybe he's injured. Um, so things like that can can really be reflected in a pregnancy rate. Pregnancy loss um, is something else we can look at. Um, it reflects potential issues, obviously, with stillbirth or spontaneous abortions. Um, so in order to calculate that, you take the number of females confirmed pregnant, subtract out the number of females that calve at the end of the season, and then divide that by the number of females that are confirmed pregnant. And you'll multiply that by 100%, and then you'll get your pregnancy loss rate. <clears throat> number of cows calving in the first 21 days of the calving season, um, that reflects our first um, service or first cycle conception rate. So if you remember, um, a cow's um, estrus cycle is generally about 21 days or three weeks long. So if they're calving in that first 21 days of the calving season, they got pregnant right away when that bull was turned in with them. Um, number of cows calving in the first 42 days of the calving season, um, again, that's going to reflect both that first and second um, cycle conception rate or service conception rate. Um, number of cows calving in the first 63 days of the calving season reflects the first, second, and third service um, or cycle conception rate. So those are helpful to understand kind of, you know, if your females are actually cycling and they're ready to be um, to get pregnant right when you turn the bull out, or if more of them are calving later in the season, then maybe they weren't quite ready when you turned the bull out to begin with, or maybe something went on with the bull in the beginning of the breeding season. So that can just be imp helpful information to know. In terms of our health benchmarks, um, these are things that can reflect potential issues related to the health or nutrition management of our cows or our calves. Um, one of the big ones is calf death loss. Obviously, this is what it, what it sounds like. It's the number of calves that die. Um, so to calculate that, you take the number of calves born, um, subtract out the number of calves that died before weaning, divide that by the number of calves born. Obviously, we want to minimize calf death loss as much as possible. Calf morbidity is another one. Um, so again, that's calf illness rate, basically. So we'll take the number of calves born, subtract out the number of calves that received veterinary care, divide that by the number of calves born. Um, again, we want these numbers as low as possible. We don't want them to be out of control. And on the cow side, um, something else we like to, to look at and record is cow body condition score at weaning. And that could give us an idea of 
um, how well that cow um, is meeting her nutritional needs through whatever feed you're giving her, whether that's pasture or grain or whatever, um, and whether or not she's able, she's been able to maintain herself well while she's been feeding, nursing that calf. Uh, we don't want our cows to get to be too thin at weeding because that means that maybe we should have been um, <clears throat> giving them better quality forage or something to that effect to make sure that they maintain themselves a little bit better. In terms of our performance benchmarks, um, a lot of these can reflect both calf and cow performance. Uh, weaning age is one um, that is calculated by the number, average number of days between birth and weaning. Uh, weaning weight is another. Um, this is obviously going to be the weight of the calves at weaning. So you would take the average of all the calves at weaning to get your average weaning weight for the herd. Um, and that's going to reflect both cow milk production as well as calf growth potential. Um, so you can't really tease out which is um, if there's a poor weaning weight, if it's because of the calf or because of the cow, um, but it can be helpful um, um, and to reflect both of those measurements or both of those, um, those animals. Um, calf average pre-weaning daily gain, so average daily gain during uh, before they're weaned, um, that's going to reflect calf growth potential and cow milk production as well, uh, but that gives you more of a almost like a more real-time type performance instead of just a uh, weaning weight at the end. Um, but you calculate that by taking the average weight at weaning, subtracting out the average birth weight, and dividing by the average age at weaning um, to get um, pounds gained per day. <clears throat> now you might be thinking, well, I don't know what the birth weight of my calves is, uh, which is a very common thing, because um, we don't always weigh our calves right at birth, and that's not a problem. Um, there's another measurement that can be used instead of um, average daily gain, and that is average weight per day of age instead. So to calculate that, you would take your average weaning weight um, and then divide that by the average age at weaning. So that doesn't that doesn't account for birth weight, uh, but assuming that most of the calves are pretty uniform when they're born um, in your herd, um, it can still be really useful and still can help you um, get an idea um, of how well your calves are growing and how well your cows are milking. Um, again, this is a very useful measurement if birth weight is not known, which is the case in mo for most of us. Um, lastly, some overall herd snapshot benchmarks. Um, again, these are going to kind of reflect, um, you know, how well things are going on the reproductive side, also the health side, as well as the performance side. So it's kind of a, a all-in-one type benchmark tool. Um, the first one is weaning percentage or calf crop. So that's the number of calves weaned divided by the number of females exposed for breeding. Um, so that's really giving you an idea of how many calves you're actually getting out of your, your cow herd in general. Um, and then last, we, lastly, we have pounds of calf weaned per cow exposed. Um, and this is basically you take the sum total of all the weaning weights of all your calves, divide that by the number of females exposed for breeding, and then multiply that by 100%. Because again, at the end of the day, we're selling calves, we're selling weight calves based on their weight. Um, so this last measurement is really, can be really informative. So setting targets. Um, so I showed you how to calculate all these different, you know, values or what to record in order to, shoot, in order to calculate them. So what do we do with it? Um, well, you can compare, the, you know, calculate those for your herd and then compare them um, to goals and it's not to set goals. But how do you set those goals? Um, the North Dakota State University Cow Herd Appraisal Performance Software, or CHAP software, um, has been going for several years, and they use data from uh, commercial cow-calf producers to develop benchmarks each year. Um, they enroll herds that have at least 50 cows, um, and these herds have to submit three years of data to the program in order to be enrolled. And then based on those data, they calculate benchmarks um, based on uh, and for the whole nation, basically. Um, and they are based on the five-year average of the program. So it's not just based on, you know, 2021 data. It's based on data from 2021 and, you know, four years past that. Um, so 2022 benchmarks, for example, are based on data from over 52,000 cows that were bred between 2017 and 2021. So it's a lot of cows, a lot of data that go into um, developing these benchmarks. But I do want to point out that 
these are benchmarks from pretty large, you know, in our terms, larger cow, calf herds. Um, so that can, you know, just keep that in mind when we when we look at our targets um, that are set or that these benchmarks that are from this program. Uh, but if you're interested in looking more into this program or learning more about it, I have the link here. Um, so if you just Google CHAPS bench, you know, cattle benchmarks, it should pop right up as well. Um, but I pulled from their 2022 report um, the different benchmarks for the different, uh, or sorry, the different targets for the benchmarks that I described um, earlier. Um, so for our reproduction benchmarks that I discussed, we have targets here um, for pregnancy rate, pregnancy loss, um, and then when cows are calving in that calving season. Um, you can see that we want our pregnancy rate to be in around 94%, if not higher. Pregnancy loss, we want that to be less than, uh, I would say, you know, less than 1% would be sufficient. And then we want, you know, around two thirds of our cows calving the first 21 days, 88% um, in that first 42 days, and almost all the cows by um, that first 63 days in the calving season. Again, um, if your calving season is a little longer, um, that's something to you know keep it, keep in mind when you're setting your own targets. But these can help you uh, get a starting point for you know some goals you might want to set for your farm. First, see where you are with your farm, see how you compare to these targets, and then kind of um, you know go from there. You know, make little progress at, at a time. Um, so calf death loss, um, cow condition score weaning, those are kind of our health type benchmarks. You can see that uh, we want our calf death loss less than you know three three and a half percent. Um, our cow condition score at weaning, we want them to be around a six um, because, again, that's going to show us that, you know, she's not milking too hard. She's not, you know, losing too much body condition um, with just, you know, just nursing that calf and that she's, of, you know, getting an adequate nutrition at that point. Um, performance, um, here are our, our targets for weaning age, weaning weight, average daily gain, and weight per day of age. Um, so, again, that's, you know, weaning weight, that's something that, you know, can be variable from herd to herd depending on the type or the breed that you have. So, again, something to just keep in mind. Um, and then lastly, our snapshot uh, measurements for, uh, you know, calf crop or weaning percentage um, or and or pounds of calf weaned per female exposed. Um, so, again, these are just some targets that you can use to get started if you don't already have goals in mind. Um, to help you kind of figure out what's a reasonable target and what is not. So how do you track progress? So in order to track progress, obviously you need to first calculate your selected benchmarks each year or each season. Um, and then what I would do um, when you're just getting started is to um, compare what you did this year to what you had last year and also the previous five years to get a good idea of what what's going on. Um, and then you can go back and compare those to those um, those benchmarks I presented in the last page or the last slide. Um, but again, it's important to be cautious when you're comparing your farm to other farms or national benchmark standards because every farm is different, has their own different um, circumstances and goals. Um, again, these shouldn't um, they should these standards should be used to help you set reasonable targets for your herd, but they should not be used to gauge whether or not you're being successful. Um, at the end of the day, your bank account will tell you whether you're, or not you're being successful. So getting started, um, the first thing I recommend doing is make a list of the benchmarks you want to use. And from there, that you can um, figure out what, what direction you're going to go. Um, before you go any further, after you make a list of benchmarks you want to use, it's important to determine how you're going to use these benchmarks to improve your herd's performance. You don't need to calculate these things if you're not going to use them, um, because at the end of the day, if you're not going to use them, there's no point in writing them down and calculating them. Um, the second thing would be to determine what data needs to be calculated in order to uh, collect or to facilitate uh, the calculations for these, these benchmarks. Um, but again, it's important to be mindful of potential facility equipment or labor, labor constraints. So if you want average daily gain on your calves, you need to have access to a scale, right? You need to be able to weigh your calves at weaning um, and, and, and at birth. Um, otherwise, you're going to need to do, um, do something else. So just keep those things in mind. Um, a lot of these things are not super labor intensive to, you know, to write down, like pregnancy rate, for example. You just need to have an idea of, you know, the, the numbers of animals in those, you know, that, 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 that got confirmed pregnant and the ones that were exposed to the bull, you know, you don't really need equipment for that, but 
just keep in mind some of your own potential limitations on your farm when you're um, going forward and picking benchmarks to use. Um, it's important for you to next make a plan or a timeline for calculating and using, to, using these benchmarks. So when you're going to actually sit down and, you know, put the data together and calculate these things, um, it can't just sit in the notebook. You actually have to do these calculations in order for that data to be useful. Uh, the next thing would be to start reporting data. Um, again, it's important to use a system that works for you. Um, again, we want good, reliable data. Um, and if you don't like computers, then I don't suggest you, you know, use an Excel sheet to collect your data. Um, but if you're like me, you like Excel, um, you know, that might work just fine for you. Um, but again, just use what works for you and what's going to be easiest for you. Because if at the end of the day, if it's something you don't want to do or you don't like to do, you're not going to stick with it. And then lastly, um, you know, adjust your targets as you need, um, as you make more progress towards your goal. Um, maybe next year you can increase pregnancy rate by like 1% or something like that, um, just as an example. Um, and the last thing I just want to mention um, is uh, we're in the process of working on a benchmark calculation tool. Um, and this is just a snapshot of what we've gotten so far. We're in the process of finalizing it and getting it on to the website so that you all will have access to it and be able to use it. But basically, uh, what this will do is you can input information here on the left side. And based on that information, it will calculate the benchmarks for you. You still have to collect the data to put on the left side. Um, but the benchmarks can be calculated for you. And then it will um, basically have the um, target for the US listed here on the right hand side here. And then you can compare how you're doing um, from that. And then this is another sheet that's associated with that tool. Um, this is just a CAF record sheet, but basically you can record all, the, all this different information onto these CAVs and it will calculate all of these different um, uh, metrics up here for your CAVs as well, um, like average daily gain or weight per day of age, things like that. So um, stay tuned for that. That's something that we're um, hopefully getting to roll out here in the winter time uh, when things are a little bit slower, um, but nonetheless, that will be something that will become available to you um, in the future. So. Uh, with that, if there are any questions, we can, um, we're a pretty small group, so you can just unmute yourself and ask. Otherwise, um, we hope to see you next week.